golfers, Mike Duro, Director of Golf at Quail Creek Country Club in Naples, Florida. Today we are going to try and make your backswing better and easier. We're going to do this by trying to get rid of a few misconceptions and secondly we just want to make it more natural okay so that you can load this club. While it's true you don't hit a ball going backwards when you get your backswing easier and you're sure of it, and you're not full of doubt, that downswing will take care of itself a lot better. Okay, what are the misconceptions? First of all, head down, left arm straight. Please throw those two out, because if you put your head down and your left arm straight, you're not gonna make a very good backswing. So trying to keep your left arm straight, while even though the pros have a very long looking arm, it is not straight. Straight is this and once it locks out you've really disconnected. So please get rid of the thought of straight left arm. Another one that people try to do is try to keep their head perfectly still. When I transfer my weight to my right side, while I didn't try to move my head, it had better move at least an inch or two. So it freely moves even though I don't think I'm moving it. Your backswing should start with a weight transfer of either feet, you swing to the right side. Okay, certainly the important thing there, and you'll hear people say, but what about a sway? A sway is only one thing, when your hips go to the right. So if your hips go that way, that's a sway. But as long as your right hip turns back, it was the old phrase from Greg Norman's right pocket back. So if your right hip goes back two to three inches, you don't have to worry about a sway. A sway is when your hips go sideways with your thought of arms. So as long as you transfer weight and get it back, it's going to be a lot easier game. The other one a lot of people have heard is keep your right elbow tucked in. Well, I want you to throw that out. If you keep your, if your elbow tucks early, you're going to have no space and you're going to be trying to get energy from a tucked position when all players throw. You can see a quarterback in football has good gap, tennis players good gap so we need you to have some space right there okay now you've probably heard the phrases cock your wrist early set your wrist okay the trouble with that even though it could be done set your wrist early and swing in fact there was an article that said set your wrist here and then swing now that might get rid of some problems but obviously it's not natural motion because it brings in a lot of problems if you set your wrist early I've seen this happen to people their heads go down because when you cock your wrist early sometimes your head goes down with it so the first thing we have to do is turn well okay this is a great drill a lot of tour players do it you put a club inside your right foot put a club across your shoulders make sure it, it's square across your shoulders so it's not all crooked like that so it associates with your shoulder sockets and you do this drill you turn until your grip is over that grip so you turn until your grip is over that grip. You don't want your grip aiming down, and that hurt, by the way, and you don't want your grip aiming up. So if you have a little posture, just a little bit of posture, 20 or 30 degrees of tilt, and you turn, your grip will probably aim about 10 feet in front of you. Also, I truly believe if you try to move your shoulders, it's hard, because if you're thinking, take this shoulder and try to move it, that's kind of hard. It's almost like this one resists. But put your hand on your chest and move your chest. All of a sudden your shoulders don't have any resistance. So move your chest. You'll get your back to the target. It's an old saying, get your back to the target. But the easy way to do it is push this right shoulder out of the way or move your chest. It's kind of like this. When you say the word turn, golf is hard because players are thinking, turn! But if you just say, take your chest and move it over here. Now all of a sudden it gets rid of a lot of stress because all we want you to be is about 70% on your right side, you're back to the target. Now, realizing you could be in this position with your body and your arms could be over here or your arms could be up here, so we need your arms to swing to a consistent position. Okay? A consistent position, ah, there's a lot of different positions by the way, but this is a pretty good one. Here my hands are in front of me. I turn over here, look where that grip is aiming. It's not in here, it's not up there. I don't want my right arm above my left, I don't want it below. For many years in college, I had my right arm below. And then 
I, while I had lag, I, the ball could go way right, as my friends will attest to. Okay, what's the most normal backswing? You make your weight transfer, your hip is turning, your chest is turning, but your arms will just unconsciously, without even any awareness, you swing them back, inertia will take them up. I said, why will inertia take them up? Because the club cannot stay on the ground, it has to go up. So the arc takes the club up. The new phrase on tour is up the wall, up the tree. So the club goes more up. Many of us think of the game as two around. We think turn and we get the club over there. That's the graveyard. You want the golf club never getting behind your heel line. There's my heel line. I want the club to go inside and, and more up. Why? It falls better, it swings better, it finds the ball better. When your arm get behind you, you have to work them back to the ball. Okay, I've helped a lot of students by getting them to understand their arms. Okay, arms, golf is easier when your arms stay in front of your chest more. I have a little thing here to show it to you. I'm going to hook this. It's a Taylor's tape measure. So I hook that. And my arms aren't very long. I'm 14 inches and one paper clip from my chest. Okay, they're hanging comfortable. When I swing back, I'm fairly wide, but I have now lost, I'm only 12 inches. I've lost two inches of space. Why? Well, when you go that way, you just lose a little space. It would probably not help me to try to stay out at 14. Okay, because you can just hear my voice get stressed and my shoulder would get stressed. But I certainly don't want to drop into a six inch range. Oops, I lost my thing. But I don't want to get closer, so I want to stay away. I did work with a blind man, and his sensation was this. Let your arms go up. Let your arms swing up. And when I do that drill, my hands get in front of my nose, about nose high, eye high. And so I had to work on that. Because my thought was always, take the club around, take the club around. But he taught me elbows go up, wrists go up. And so when you swing, your body turns and the arms and wrists go up. Because then they'll come down and they'll swing a lot better. And you'll finish in this same position. So it goes, I'm in front of my nose. So there's my position. I turn to here. I swing. And then I'm back at that position. In a perfect world, this is what arms would do. They would swing. As I, as I transfer my weight and turn my hip a little bit, so weight transfer and a little rotation, your arms would swing. Then when will they fold? And I call it a fold and a hinge. Wrists are, I call them hinges. That's a fold, you know, it's just a term, but watch where it happens. So I transfer my weight, I turn my hip a little, and it goes fold hinge. So where does it happen? Right in this zone, right here. Naturally, it goes fold hinge. So I don't have to think about it. Where does it happen? Watch. Fold hinge. Okay? I don't have to tell it to happen. That's a folder. That's a hinger. Fold hinge. Now notice the shape of my right arm right here. It looks like an L or a 90 degree lever. My wrists will hinge in a 90 degree. And this golf club in a perfect world would aim right over my shoulder right at the target. If it's aiming over there, it's out of position. That's called cross the line. But if you allow it to go fold hinge, that's really nice. I advise people to do it first without weight, see if they can do it without weight, and then grab the club and see if they can do it with weight. And if it can keep getting to that same place, you go fold hinge. By the way, I put my finger on here. If you don't put your finger there, you might make the shape, but notice I didn't turn. But when you put your finger on your elbow, You'll feel your body will go right with you. So you don't even know you move the shoulder, but it will follow the folding arm. Good players have a really good gap ratio between wrist and shoulder and elbow and body. Watch this player. And you go, oops, no gap here. When there's no gap there, of course, they have to throw it early. If you fold too much with your V, now you're too close to your shoulder, there's no gap there. Again, to get it going, you'll have to throw it away from your shoulder and you'll wonder, why is my consistency? Two wonderful drills for building the gap. And again, all they said in golf, all you have to be is good for the first two feet. So watch this. Here's a great drill. You hook your wrist behind your right elbow and you swing with a little rotation and weight transfer 
and you only go to here. Now, what has your right arm done? The answer is nothing. It's simply swung, okay? The grip will still be aiming at your hip. Why is it, why are you doing the right thing here? You're stopping your elbow from doing any of this tucking, okay? You don't want your elbow to get behind the seam of your shirt, and as soon as it gets behind the seam of your shirt, you've made the game hard and you've lost all your power. So you hook your wrist back here, and how far do you go? Only to there. And if you just did that about 15, 10 times, 15, 10, 10, 15 times, okay? And then put your hand on it and do it again. And you go, there's where I go. And then of course you have to complete the swing, so don't ever do a drill so long that you forget what the whole thing feels like, so then do the whole thing. And you go, there it is. Okay, so you do the drill, and then you put your hands on it, and you do the whole swing up. Okay, the other drill that works really well is you take the club at least halfway down the grip. Now it's weird, the grip is aiming towards your hip, but the real improvement in the drill is this. Again, you transfer your weight, you turn your hip a little, but look where the club goes. I'll show it to you from here. Look where the club head is outside of my hand line, and the grip is still at my hip. So you relax your arms, and you swing, and you only go to here. And you do that about 10 times. Okay, now you can complete this if you fight that club off your hip. So watch, there we go. So, but look how good it is the first two feet. Okay, it's perfect the first two feet. Have I done anything with my wrist? And you go, no, because you don't have to in golf. If you do something early with your wrist, you are manipulating the golf club. We want, of course, your wrists and arms to be unconscious. So you look at a ball, you want to go that away, and somebody says, okay, we'll swing it. But there's where the club should look for the first two, three feet. And then, of course, it folds up. I had to practice folding up. I had to practice that the club goes up, the club goes up, the club goes up. So I did drills like this. Do nothing, then the club goes mainly up, then I hit a ball, then I go over here, and the club goes mainly up. I think that covers it, what I want to cover today. An easy backswing. Again, your right hip just turns, your chest just turns, your head is going to move. It just is. And then from there, of course, we do need to make a really good pivot and trust it and enjoy golf. But, but get it back easier and the golf will be easier to hit the bottom and have a good swing. Enjoy your practice.